Hey friend, in this video, we are doing something very, very fun. It is the restrictor it, restrictor, the restricted brush stroke challenge. That's actually the challenge in itself is saying the title of this video. It's very challenging. Um, so in this video, I am gonna be painting the same exact flower in three different steps, amount of steps. So the first is 30 steps. And I thought that was not very much to begin with. Turns out, 15 steps is even less. And then five steps is even way less and it's crazy. So if you're excited, if you're excited, of course you're excited. If you're ready to see how I use just five steps or just 15 steps to paint this flower, then let's dive in. So for the supplies, I'm using my Bloom size 12 filbert brush and mixing up permanent red light and some quinacridone red. And I am doing this first one in 30 steps. So this was actually a lot less than I thought it would be, but I am taking the top edge of the brush and chiseling out the circular shape first and then lightening the, the brush to get a little bit more transparent and fatter with my strokes. So I'm being very intentional and selective with where I'm placing these strokes and making much bigger, fatter strokes or marks because this is actually a lot less than I guess I normally paint um, steps wise for a rose like this. So I'm starting to widen my strokes and get really fat and transparent a little bit sooner than I normally would. So I can fluff up this flower. And then now that I have eight strokes left, I'm painting in some green gold for my leaves using the corner of the filbert brush and maybe a couple stems. So with three steps left, I'm just gonna kind of dance around and add leaves to frame the flower. And there you go, there's the first one with 30 steps. This was way less steps than I anticipated, but still such a good lesson. And then now we're on to the 15 step flower, same colors, permanent red light and quinacridone red, and chiseling out the center of the rose with the corner or top edge of the brush. So this one sneaks up really fast with how many strokes I'm using. I want a mixture of both fat and thin strokes because that's gonna really accentuate the rose shape. But the thin strokes really feel like you're not getting much down on paper. So it's important to have really fat, thick strokes as well to balance that out and make this flower feel really fluffy. So I'm gonna leave a few, just a couple of steps for my leaves. I need to make sure to leave some steps for my leaves. Um, and as you can see, I'm thinking very intentionally about where to place my steps, where to place my next petals, because I only have five steps left to complete this flower. So being very mindful and intentional is helping me really shape this flower with purpose. So I have three steps left. We're gonna grab some green and plop in some leaves to frame the flower. I want some really fat strokes and leaves. And so I've got a stem, a stem and a couple little leaves. And I really like this one. This was such a fun exercise. It was kind of stressful, but I love the way this particular rose came out. I think it's so cute, simple and straight to the point. So next, this one is crazy. <laughs> Five steps for a rose is kind of intense. I felt very anxious painting this, and so I had to do one big loop for the center of my flower. So I had to press and loop my brush around all the way to give it this kind of comma or apostrophe shape. And then I have two or three more strokes left for my actual flower before I should start painting in some leaves. So I'm following through with fat for pressure for a thick part of the petal and then releasing that pressure so I can have thin strokes as well because that's what's gonna show um, the depth of this rose. So three strokes for my flower and then I'm gonna leave over two strokes for a stem and a leaf. And even though this is extremely basic and simple, I actually really like how this came out. This was so challenging, this particular one with just five steps was so challenging, but it was very insightful on how intentional I need to be. I probably took about 10 different tries to get this one right. So I had to really mess with it and play with it until I got the right situation for my rose. All right, thank you so much for watching. That taught me so much. Like I was surprised how much I learned and was able to analyze before doing especially the 15 one and the five step one, I, I learned a ton. And now I'm looking forward to implementing less steps, being more intentional and more, yeah, intentional about how many strokes I use 
for my paintings because that was very, very insightful. So if you've tried it out after watching this video and you maybe learned something, let me know in the little comments below. I'd love to, I would love to hear that. Um, also check out my Patreon. We do two exclusive monthly tutorials on that platform and there's a art community. There's so much more to take your art to the next level at my Patreon. If you go to generani.com forward slash Patreon, you'll find the different tiers that we have available there as well as my books, Everyday Watercolor and Everyday Watercolor Flowers. If you wanna take your art to another level with a tangible item like a book, then make sure you check those out on Amazon or any local bookstore or even a library if you wanna check it out at the library. It's usually available at most libraries, so check it out. And my course, my online course, The Art Within is gonna teach you how to develop your style and work with the foundations of any type of art medium and take it to the next level. So if you wanna check out my course, the Art Within, it's generani.com forward slash the dash art dash within. I hope to see you in there and I will see you in the next video.